Greetings everyone. In this video, we're still doing Microsoft Word 2016. So the focus of this video is going to be editing a document. So I'm going to work on a roughly typed document and just modify it so that it looks more attractive. We will start with the title over them. Okay, let me just try to break the pages. Double click, okay. So we're going to choose the title. We, let's give it a size 40. I don't see a 40. If you don't see a 40 on the drop down list, doesn't mean that it's not part of weight. You can type it in size 40. And then there you have your horizon production. Then I'll change the color, maybe give it a color blue, standard blue. That's okay. Center align it and then bold is fine. Let's also give it a small caps. Don't confuse small caps with reducing the size there. That's the decreasing of size. If I click on it, it will move from a size 40 and make it a size 36. And this will take it back to size 48. Okay, let me just say undo to go back to size 40. And then lower case will make it all caps, small letters. Upper case will make it all capital letters. So lower case and decrease small size is not small caps at all. Where is small caps? We will get small caps on the font dialog box. Okay, where do we get a font dialog box? You'll see on your font copy in there, there's a little icon on the top bottom corner. When you click on it, it gives you a dialog box. Okay, and then there is your small caps. You could have still changed your font type from there the style as well as the size from the small caps. You'll see small caps makes everything look like capital letters, but the ones that are already capital will look bigger than the rest. Okay. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is to select my three subheadings, the subtitles. We have um, three of them. I can do and try to do this, which is quite a long way. Change this, change the color maybe. Let's give it, um, Okay, that light blue italic underline. And then we can also, I don't like the color. So I'm just gonna give it any dark color. And then change the size, make it a size 12. Maybe we can make this aerial. And then now the question wants you to do the same for all subtitles. Now I would have to remember this was select, this was aerial, it was bolded, underlined and so on. So that's just a long way of doing it. But if you've already done it, you can select there and then use Format Painter. Double click on it because we're going to use it more than once. And then it will take everything that we did on the first subtitle if you select it and put it on the second title. And then I can also go select the third title. If all the formatting will also go on upcoming in test ships. And if I don't want to make use of Format Painter anymore, I can press ESC, the first key on the keyboard to escape from a painter. Alternatively, I could have just right there on the onset, select all three subheadings. The first one is selected, scroll down, press control and hold on the keyboard, select the second one, scroll down, press control and hold on the keyboard and select the third one. So all three of them are selected, but remember if you press control and scroll at the same time, it's going to zoom you in and out. So you would have to let go of control in order to scroll up and down, okay? So now I know I can go change the color, bold it, italic, underline, can even change to, so all three of them are changing to aerial, and then size 14 maybe. Just remember, it's your personal choice how you're going to do it, but doing them one by one is just a waste of time. Okay, and then I'm going to select all text. I can go and select this all text by just dragging down there. Okay, or alternatively, just press Control A on the keyboard, which is A, a short for all, and then all the text would be selected. I want the line spacing between my lines there to be a little bit smaller. It's quite big there. Okay, that's not nice to read. So where is my line spacing right next to your alignments? You can go there and say 1.5. 1.5, 1.15 is normally the recommended one. Two is quite big. 1.5 and you see now the lines, the lines, the spacing between your lines is bit, a little bit better. And also let's try to separate these paragraphs from one another by creating spacing after. 
we go back to line spacing and now we say line spacing options and on spacing after we can set it at six point and say okay you will see now these paragraphs are separated from one another with a six point spacing in between okay so what else can we do you will see that i have a list of items there but it doesn't look like a list of items because we haven't numbered or bulleted it let's put bullets on it right there on top of your alignment those are called the solid circles a standard bullets we can go inside and change to another bullet we can go for that one we can even define a bullet and make it look the way we want let's say define a bullet font and then change its color let's make it the same purple as the subheadings and then we can change the size okay okay and that's how our bullet looks like okay it doesn't look purple let me go define it again and change the color let's make it light so that you can see that the color has changed oh. I'm gonna change it to blue. I'm not sure why the color is not changing. Blue, 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 blue. Okay, for some reason it's not changing. Okay, I have my blue there, which is the one that I had defined before and it worked perfectly. So the second one there, I still want to put it, but I want the same formatting. So I'm just going to make use of Format Painter because I saw that it does things quite quickly. Only clicked on it once because I'm going to use it once and then the bullets look the same. I could have numbered them instead of bullets. can go for numbers. I can choose different numbering system, the ABCs or the Romans numbers and so on, so on. But I think I will stick with the star bullets. Okay. And then the other thing that we can do on this document is to change the margins, okay? You will see that the margin on the left-hand side is larger than the one on the right-hand side. That doesn't look nice. And the one on top and bottom is quite too big. Where do we change margins? I go to the Layout tab. You will see that we have margins as the very first option. These are the predefined ones, okay? Sometimes I will tell you make it narrow, moderate, wide, or Customize the margins. Customize, that's when you insert specific values. So top and bottom are already at 2.54. I think I will leave it at that. But with left margins, I will also like to make them both at 2.5. You'll see that left, it was three, and then the right one is 1.9. Hence, this one looked bigger than the right-hand side one. Let's make them both 2.5. Type 2.5. Type 2.5. You can also make use of the arrows there. And then we say, okay. So you'll see that they are now nicely spaced, same size. Okay. And then I think it looks just about okay. Okay. So what else can we do to this document to make it look nice? Okay, we changed margins, we changed a paragraph alignment. We can also change the spacing before paragraphs. Let's see. Select everything, go back to home. Remember, we changed that spacing from here. You can still also change it on the dialog box. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't make any difference. Let's make spacing before to be set to 12. And then you'll see now before the paragraph, the spacing is nicely set at 12. It just separates your paragraphs nicely. And you will see it also separated from the title. That means in computer terms, that is the first paragraph of the document. And then we also did um, the bullets, we did numbering, we customized our bullets. And the last thing that we're going to do on this document is to set tab stops. What are tab stops? Tab stops, they separate columns for us. You will see that here there are a list of meetings that were set. Okay, we have four types of meetings for techni technical assistance for artists, film and art. And this one would be held on the uh, 6th of August. The art one will be held on the 12th of August, but it looks like it's one line, whereas it should be separated on the dates there. So what I'm going to do is to select my entire paragraph. I want this to be separated and be put maybe at 8.79. Between the lines on the rulers there, remember if you don't get a ruler, you just have to go to view and say click on, so if you don't see it, you say view and say ruler and then it will appear. 
So between the numbers, you get three decimals, just like we had with um, our page borders. So it will be a two, a 0 0.25, a 0 0.5, and a 0 0.75, all right? So you get 7.25, 7.5, 7.75. So let's say we're going to put it at 8.75. That would be 8.75. Another thing that you need to be careful of on a question like that of tap stops, you need to check the alignment. What was the alignment? Did the question say left alignment, center alignment? Was it decimal alignment? Where is this alignment? It's not the same as the paragraph alignment there. No. Okay. The alignment is right there on top of your vertical ruler. You'll see when I put in my mouse pointer there, it says left tap. Let's make it center alignment or right tap, no center. Okay, that is center tap. And then if I go and say 8.75, it didn't even make that much of a difference. So I can go move it. If I'm not happy with that tap, left click on it and drag it to maybe 12. And you will see that I have a tap there, a line that is right at the center of what I just moved. All right, okay. That is about it with that document. Let's also, let me also show you tap stops on another document. There I have it. You will see here I have a paragraph with four columns. It's a day column, class column, time, as well as day of length. You don't want to make use of a ruler. You can always make use of a dialog box. Okay. How do we get to a dialog box? You go for the paragraphs dialog box. Just like we got the font dialog box, that's how we will get a paragraph dialog box, that little icon over there. Open it. And then at the bottom, there's a button that says tabs. Okay. You click on tabs. And then when you get to tabs, you, it's, you choose alignment. Remember that alignment is not the same as that one on the paragraphs there. So the first tab, 3.25, and then you say set. And you'll see it will move from the checkboard, from the text box to your um, <clears throat> list box there. And then the second one, let's say 8.5. So if your computer set the commas to be dots, and then you'd go and decide to use a comma there, then it's going to reject it. Okay, it will depend on your computer settings. My question might say dot, but then your computer is a comma. So just remember, if it rejects a comma, it's possible that your computer is set to, to use a comma as a comma rather than a dot. Okay, 8.5 and we say set, the second tap stop is in, and the last one will be 7, 12.75 and we say set. All three tap stops are in with the right alignment and we say okay. And you see them on the ruler there. So that is an alternative to using a ruler. Okay. All right, that is all for today. Please remember to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and look out for the next video where we are going to create a resume or rather a curriculum vitae. Okay, see you next time. Bye.